Hey everyone, welcome to PC Perspective. Today we're here to look at another 4K monitor. This time, here we have the ASUS PB287Q. If you remember just a short couple of weeks ago, we actually looked at this monitor here. This is the Samsung U28D590D. Now these two monitors share a lot of common technology. In fact, they use pretty much the same panel in here, which means both of these monitors are going to be TN based, but as we talked about in our previous video, the TN quality in this monitor is actually much better than I think most of our readers and viewers will think of when they think of TN panels. Now, what the ASUS monitor does is it improves upon the design that, Sam uh, that Samsung has out quite dramatically, and most of it is on other things. The stand, for example, is incredibly improved over what Samsung has. This monitor has height adjustment. This monitor has uh, the ability to rotate and tilt uh, back and forth. It has the ability to rotate into a portrait style mode if you want. The stand uh, is a lot more rigid. Uh, this one seemed to wobble quite a bit. This one wobbles quite a bit less. The bezel around the sides is a matte finish, which I definitely like. Um, the on-screen display is improved. They have a lot of really interesting features in the on-screen display. You can see uh, indications of all the buttons down here. They're actually on the back side of the monitor. Two of those buttons are actually programmable, or you can set a favorite feature to them. You can set it to volume. You can set it to picture-in-picture uh, -picture mode. You can set it to anything you want, essentially, from the internal menus, which I think is pretty cool. I do wish they had moved the power button further away from the other buttons because I did accidentally hit it a few times while kind of changing some of these settings. Now we have both these monitors connected. Uh, in terms of connectivity, the ASUS monitor is very similar to what we saw with the Samsung display. You have a DisplayPort connection that can do DP 1.2, which is great because this gives you the best feature of this monitor, which is that it runs at 4K, 3840 by 2160, 60 hertz, on a single stream, right? So you don't have any of these multi-stream transport things that you have to worry about. A single cable, a single connection, it shows up to your graphics card as one monitor, no questions asked. It's very nice. You also have two HDMI ports. These actually have support for MHL, which will allow you to connect cell phones and tablets up to it. It's kind of a lesser known standard, but it's there if you need it. This also has audio output. So if you have connections in there, uh, like your HDMI input, and you want to take audio out, there's a headphone port on there, and they include an accessory cable for you to output to speakers as well. This does have uh, a pair of 5-watt stereo speakers on it as well, if you want to use those, although I imagine most people are either going to use nice headphones or uh, high-end speakers for that. One of the target markets for this is obviously the PC enthusiast and the PC gamer. The, the idea of gaming at 4K is going to draw many of you to the $649 uh, ASUS PB287Q monitor. Make sure you have the GPU horsepower to back it up, though. You're going to need high-end GPU configurations, right? You're going to need 780 Ti or 290X or multiple of those graphics cards. You're going to need a lot of horsepower to play Metro Last Light or Crisis 3 or Battlefield 4 at the resolutions and quality that you're going to want to. Which actually leads me to the next point. For each of these monitors that you use, and I know at a $650 price point, some of you will probably be thinking about buying multiples of these monitors, which is going to be awesome for productivity and use cases like that, but you do need one DisplayPort connection per monitor. And as we looked through a lot of our video cards, both in the 290, 290X series, as well as the GTX 7 series, most of those only have a single DisplayPort connection. So if you have two graphics cards, you're going to have two DisplayPort connections so you could support two monitors that way. But you definitely need to make sure you have a DisplayPort connection per monitor if you're going to go the multi-monitor route. Now that we've actually seen two different 4K monitors, both fairly low price, the differences between them are actually pretty substantial. Even though they both have the same panel and they both have the same viewing angle concerns and they're both based on a TN monitor, the stand of the ASUS display is worlds better than what you have with the Samsung. You have all the tilt and rotation capability as well as Visa support on this. If you want to remove the stand completely and uh, mount it to a wall or mount it to any other structure, you absolutely have the capability to do that. You do not have that with the Samsung. This monitor is $50 less expensive. It's going to be available June 10th, so it is market a little bit later than the Samsung is. But if both of these are available, I think the Asus is the clear winner in this case. Check out the full review at PCPer.com, and thanks for watching.